The National Institute of Communicable Diseases, the NICD, says that it's highly probable that the COVID-19 vaccinations could be inoculated annually, just like the flu vaccine. And this is due to more, than, uh, more and more COVID-19 strains that continue to weaken antibody reactions to vaccines and because the immune system of those vaccinated weakens against diseases over time. Over 16,000 COVID-19 genomes have been discovered by the NICD since the pandemic initially hit our shores. The NICD reiterated that the vaccines administered in the country continue to prevent severe illness and death. Well, to talk to us a little bit more is Dr. Catherine Skippers, who's a senior medical scientist at the Center for HIV AIDS and STIs Virology Group. Thank you very much indeed for joining us and welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me. All right, 16,000 genomes. Uh, explain what that means. Yeah, so I'm part of a network of genomic surveillance mm. in South Africa, which is a group of scientists across South Africa um, made up of many universities and as well as the NICD and the NHLS. And what we do is routinely look at uh, SARS-CoV-2 sequences. So when somebody tests positive on a PCR test, we, we take a selection, a random selection of those PCR tests across the country, and then we sequence them to see what the virus looks like. So it's a way of us monitoring changes in the virus over time. So it's mutating, um, but when you say 16,000 different genomes, we don't have 16,000 different types of COVID-19, right? Yeah, so a lot of those genomes really are just multiple um, of the same variant, right. so Delta or, or Beta. So right now, Delta accounts for majority of the sequences in South Africa, roughly 95% of the sequences that we're getting are matching right. towards Delta. How different does uh, COVID-19 coronavirus behave to other uh, viruses that we've gotten vaccines to, are the other ones not mutating as much? What is it with COVID-19? So actually, all viruses mutate um, all the time. It's a fairly normal phenomenon for, for viruses. Um, so when you compare it to HIV, for example, coronavirus mutates far less than, than HIV. Um, and so um, it's all, I guess, it, it's not that it's mutating a lot more than other viruses. It's just this is a normal behavior. Um, and the more we have more people that are infected mm. with the virus, the more we're going to start identifying additional variants. Um, so it's, yeah. All right, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. But, you know, just to mm -hmm. try and simplify it for our viewers, why is it that you only get one polio vaccine and um, it looks like we're probably going to get, you know, these vaccines more often. What, what happens? What's the difference? So um, I, mean, I think with polio, it's mostly eradicated now. So the chance mm. of um, it being trans, uh, transmitted sorry, yeah. to other um, people is very low. Whereas now with SARS coronavirus, that the, there's a high rate of infection. And so the rate or the chance of it being transmitted is really high. And again, as more you have, uh, as you have more people infected with the virus, you have a higher chance of it mutating. Okay. So this, yeah. All right, that makes sense then. So frequency, numbers, all of that contribute to the rate of mutation over time. All right, yeah. so is it looking like we're probably going to be getting booster shots? So at this point, um, it, it probably would be likely that we would need to get a booster shot. So most of the, the vaccines that are on the market were developed from the original um, strain of coronavirus. And so we have new variants that have evolved um, to be able to get into our cells better and to evade the immune system better. And so like we do with the flu vaccine, we modify that vaccine to to match kind of the variants that are circulating at the time. So we were probably at some point would get boosters of slightly modified vaccines to account for variants that are circulating. 
I, I suppose it's great to get these boosters, but does it mean that we are still in with a good chance of not getting very sick and uh, being hospitalized and dying uh, on the current uh, uh, shots, even if I don't get a booster next year? Yeah, absolutely. So um, vaccines kind of work in multiple ways. So there's one is a protection against infection. Um, and that's where we talk about waning of antibodies. So when you get a reduction in, in numbers and um, of your antibodies, the chance of getting infected is higher. But we also vaccines also protect against disease state. And that's a different arm of the immune system that really protects us against severe disease and that's T cells. And so um, even against variants that we have now, though you could still get infected after vaccination, you would still experience a, a far milder disease uh, because the vaccines are still effective even um, against current va variants. All right, help us with this journey because it's a debate that's happening quite a bit now and not just here. Synthetic antibodies and um, normal uh, antibodies that you generate yourself uh, as a human being. It seems the ones you generate yourself are probably better, uh, but can the two exist together? So I think when you're talking about synthetic um, antibodies, you're referring to uh, engineered yes. antibodies. Yeah. So, so antibodies, what we do, let me, let me yeah. explain about how we get to an engineered antibody. So when somebody gets uh, infected, we naturally make antibodies against that virus. And so we isolate those antibodies from blood. And then we study those antibodies to see what they're doing. Now, when we engineer antibodies, sometimes... Um, what we're doing is just changing the sequence slightly, and that could be to increase the half-life of that antibody. That means it will stay in your system longer, or it will improve its ability to bind to the virus or to block infection. So in a way, what we're doing is taking a natural antibody and just um, making it a little bit better to be uh, in a product form so that it would last longer um, in the immune system and, and work effectively. So in a way, I would say that engineered antibodies are slightly better than, okay. than natural antibodies. All right. Long term, you've given me this example of uh, polio, that uh, not a lot of people are infected, that uh, uh, infection rates are so small and therefore mutations uh, probably occur much less frequently. Will we ever get to that point with COVID-19, do you think? I think if we have enough people that are vaccinated, if we have enough coverage where the chances of getting infected are much lower, we could get to a, a point where it would be kind of like the flu, where it would be this is coronavirus season and we would maybe get a yearly shot or something. But it wouldn't impact us in such a way that we'd have to continue to go into a lockdown. So probably coronavirus or this version of coronavirus will be with us for a very long time, but we'll learn to kind of adapt to it and live with it in such a way that it's not affecting our day-to-day -day life. The most, I think, important thing is that um, we will experience far fewer deaths and severe uh, disease with this when we, you know, as we get the coverage of vaccination much better. All right. And as I'm hearing you talking, uh, the importance of herd immunity becomes more and more, doesn't it? Absolutely. That's the, that's the main thing that we want to try and get as many pre people protected as possible. And the way to do that is through vaccination. Dr. Skippers, thank you so, so much indeed for joining us this evening. Uh, your insights are greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So that's Catherine Skippers, who's a senior uh, medical um, scientist at the Centre of HIV AIDS and STIs uh, Virology Group.